Welcome back to the TensorFlow course by Eduonix. In this video, we're going to be covering the machine learning lifecycle and how to use TensorBoard. We're going to start with a brief discussion about the machine learning lifecycle, followed by a simple example using a TensorFlow model and a toy dataset. After that, we're going to move on to the topic of TensorBoard, where we'll learn how to modify the code of our model in order to save summaries for TensorBoard, and then we're going to move on to actually viewing those summaries as well as exploring the graph of our model. If you were to look up the machine learning lifecycle, you'll probably find a lot of examples, but there are a number of elements that should stay roughly the same. The first step is to define the objective. So this is where you're going to be clearly outlining the goals of your project. And if you haven't already, then you're going to move on to collecting any data that's required. Sometimes you'll already have data before defining the objective, and in that process, you'll determine that you need some external data sources. So in step two, you're going to go out and collect any data remaining that you need. And then in step three, you're going to be cleaning. This is where you'll be handling missing values, extreme values, just anything that looks out of sorts. Sometimes you just need to remove certain things from strings that are part of your data or anything else like that. Then you're going to move on to exploratory data analysis. This is where you're going to be looking at a lot of different summary statistics. You're going to be plotting a lot, trying to gain an understanding of the structure and relationships within your data. This helps to determine what type of model you should use, as well as any features that might be important. And then there's data processing. This is where you do everything that you need to structure your data for the models that you're going to be training. So you may be doing feature engineering where you're going to be constructing new features from features you already have, where you may be combining them or stripping them down, removing certain components. It depends, but there are a lot of different things you could be doing in the processing step. Once you have all of that out of the way, you finally are ready to begin training and evaluating your models, and that's step six. So in that step, you're gonna be doing anything that you need to build up the model and you're gonna be feeding your data through, training it, and evaluating the performance. This is generally a process that you'll repeat a number of times in order to get the best model possible. So really, steps five and six can be cyclical. You may be doing that a number of times. You might go back and create some new features in step five for data processing based on your model output just to test different things and move back to step six to train and evaluate all over again. Once you're happy with your model, then you move on to deployment. This is where you're gonna be deploying either to servers or particular applications. At that point, you then monitor results. So you're gonna be seeing how your model's performing over time. And then at that point, you'd cycle back and you're gonna iterate and update your model as necessary. Let's move on to something a little more fun and actually give an example of a machine learning life cycle. This is going to be pretty simple and we're going to use a toy data set. But let's start with step one, our objective. We're going to infer how IQ, years of experience, and age affects income using a linear model. That linear model will create using TensorFlow. Step two, collect data. We don't actually have a data set for this, but we can create one. So let's start by importing our libraries. We need TensorFlow, NumPy, and we need Pandas for data frames. So the first thing that we'll do for creating our data set is we're gonna set a random seed. So in this, we have mp.random.seed, and we're gonna set that using 555. What that'll do is it'll just make things consistent so that we all get the same results. For this, we need three variables. We need IQ, years of experience, and we need age. But in order to illustrate some data processing, instead of age, we're actually gonna start with date of birth. So let's create our variables. We're gonna use NumPy random in order to do that. So let's start with x1. Okay, so what we have here is we're creating the IQ variable for x1. We're using NumPy random and more specifically random normal. So we're gonna generate 200 values with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. 
and then we're just going to create these as integers. We could leave them as floats. Uh, we're just going to start as integers because we don't really need anything other than those. We don't need precision down to half of an IQ point. And then we can do something similar in order to create x2. So for x2, let's just duplicate that and change a few things. This is going to be our years of experience. So let's set a mean of 10, and we're going to do a standard deviation of 4.5. Again, we want 200. In this case, we'll leave that as a float because we can have fractions of years. And then one more, we need our x3. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to create age, since remember we're synthesizing our data set, so we're just going to create an age, mean of 32, and we're going to have a standard deviation of 4. From this, it's just making it easy to create a date of birth, and you'll see why in just a second. And we'll leave that as type int, because we also don't need half years. Now this is where we will create our date of birth. I'm just going to use October 20, October 31st, 2017 as our reference point. So we'll just say that this data was collected on October 31st of 2017. And so we're going to minus 365 times x3. So what we get here is we're going to subtract 365 times x3, and that's going to give us total days we have our age in years for x3, but what we want is to subtract days from this numpy date time object. Because every time we subtract an integer, it's actually subtracting days from this date. So that'll give us our date of birth values. And then we're gonna need an intercept since we're doing a linear model. So let's set that equal to, we'll just say five. It's not really all that important. It's hard for us to say what that intercept would be in reality. And then we're also gonna create some noise in order to uh, affect our no model, because in real life, things would not be perfect. There would be some error. And we're just gonna do a mean of zero and let's say 1.5 for standard deviation. And again, we need 200 values. And now we can define our linear model. This isn't actually our model, we just need y values. But this is where we will define the parameters that we'll later infer using, or that we'll learn using our model with TensorFlow. So let's say for IQ, it'll be 0.3 And yeah, that seems right. Plus B, and then we need plus E. And here we're using a list comprehension, and that's why we have lowercase on the X's. So you'll see as we complete this. All right, so here we're gonna be creating the true values for our model that we're gonna be using for comparison to learn off of. And that's why I've used X3. Other than creating this to create our date of birth values, it also helps us to create our true values for our model. So let's return that, and that'll be our starting point. So we've collected our data right here. And then let's move on to cleaning. While we know our data set doesn't have any missing values because we created it, there is a chance that we have some negative values for something that we do not want. So x2, we have a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 4.5. That's for our years of experience. Obviously, we don't want negative years experience, so we need to check that out. In order to do so, we're going to be creating a pandas data frame that'll help us to explore and edit any of the data. Let's start by creating a columns, or we'll call it calls. That'll be our variable in order to create the data frame. And 
And then our last one is date of birth. So those columns we'll just pass to the data frame constructor. We'll call our data frame df. So what I've done here is for the values of our data frame, I used list outside of zip. So zip, because it's just a generator, we actually need to call list outside of it. So I've zipped x1, x2, and date of birth together. And that'll help us to create our data frame. Then one thing that we'll add is the income. And that's our y value that we created. And calling df.info just gives us a very brief description. We can see that we have non-null values, 200 of them for each of our features, as expected and we have a total of 200 entries, which means we have zero null values. So that's good. But let's move on, and we're gonna do df.describe. That's gonna give us some summary statistics. If we take a look at year's experience for the minimum value, we have a negative. We don't have a negative for income, that's good. We have 49,000 for income, and that seems pretty reasonable, maximum of about 98,000. Well, we do have a pretty low value for a minimum of IQ. That's okay, we just have a basic example here. So let's fix that negative value. In order to do that, we can use pandas to kind of filter this out. So let's do, actually I wanna get rid of that. We're gonna set the data frame equal to itself, but only values that are greater than zero for years experience or greater than or equal to. We're going to call describe once more just to make sure that we filtered that out properly. And lo and behold, years experience our minimum is now virtually zero, but it's not less than zero, so we're good to go. At this point, we can move on to exploratory data analysis because we don't really have any other cleaning to do. We have some pretty good values in here. We could clean out IQ of 62, but we're not going to do that. We'll just leave it. Sometimes we actually get a head start on our exploratory data analysis when we're doing the cleaning. So up here, when we're cleaning, we're already looking at summary statistics for IQ, years experience, and income. But notice one thing, we don't have date of birth yet. That's because the pandas describe function by default is only gonna be working with numeric values. But what we can do is we can pass and include. So we're gonna have df.describe and the include argument. And inside this list, we can pass anything we want included. So we want date time 64, because that's the data type that we created using our NumPy uh, date time. So once we do that, then we'll actually get stats for date of birth. In this case, because it's not numeric, we don't have mean standard deviation, but we do have total count, how many unique dates of birth we have, which is kind of interesting. We only have 22 uniques for 200 values. And then we also have the most common date of birth, which in this case looks like 1986, November 8th. And there are 20 of these top values. And then we also have first, which is the earliest, 1975, and the last, 1996. Then of course, we need to do some visual exploration. So we'll just do two things here. One of them is overall pretty powerful for something like this. That's the pandas plotting. So we're gonna do plotting and a scatter matrix. And to that, we just need to pass what data frame we want, which is DF, it's the only one we have. And let's set the figure size so it's not too small. Let's go ahead and do 16 by nine. And of course, there was one very important part that we need to do, and that's import matplotlib. And then also, we're going to use this magic to create matplotlib inline. 
that'll make sure that the plots end up inside the Python notebook.